Hey, what's up guys? This is me again, Ayub from the Web Dev Cave, and this is a new video about REST and RESTful services. In this video, I'm gonna talk about RESTful services, I'm gonna talk about REST, APIs, RESTful APIs, and everything you need to know about this topic. Before I start, let me give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll give you an explanation of APIs and I'm going to clarify a lot of misconceptions. Then we'll discover what REST is and how it relates to the HTTP, the web and APIs and all of that. We'll see why REST, why not something else. We'll cover REST for web services. We'll see how they work and we'll see examples in Node. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Let's talk about APIs first. In this section, I'll give a brief overview of what an API is and how it fits into the big picture. I'm gonna answer three questions. What is an API? How does it relate to web services? And what is a REST API? Okay, let's start by answering the first question. An API stands for Application Programming Interface and it is a way to let software components to talk to each other. And this simple diagram shows a visualization of this communication. Let's start by a simple analogy. I'm assuming you are familiar with object-oriented programming. In object-oriented programming, objects have methods and attributes, okay? So later when we want to use or communicate with the objects, say we want to use its attributes or its functionalities, we use the methods and the attributes that the object exposes, okay? Here we have an object called object A and it has two attributes and two methods, okay? The set of these methods and attributes is called the API of the object so to communicate or use the functionalities of object a we do that through its api that is to say its methods and attributes so basically an api is just a way to communicate with software components it could be anything in any form the only thing that it has to be is that it has to be a way to communicate with software components in the previous example it took the form of a set of attributes and methods now let me give you another example everyone knows about it's simple it's the way we interact with the operating system in the command line actually this is a form of using an api if you are a mac or linux user or even window a windows user you may be familiar with the terminal or the command line Line interface and you could write a script that uses the same API that is exposed by the system to shut it down or do any of the operations that are permissible by the system so an API could be anything in any form okay now I hope this is clear all right let's answer the second question how does the concept of an API relate to a web service? And what is the difference between them? We almost always hear web services and APIs used interchangeably, and this causes a lot of confusion even for experienced developers. We often hear REST web services and we hear REST APIs. Well, are they the same? I hope this video will clear things up. Remember what we said about an API? It is just a way to communicate with the software components? Well, most of the times, if not all, APIs are created for other software components. How an API is implemented and what it consists of is not important. To be called an API, all it has to do or to be is a way to is a way for two software components to talk to each other. All right. Now, I hope you have seen my previous video about web services. Um, in a nutshell, a web service is a set of rules and technologies for two web components to communicate and talk to each other. So if you think about it, web services are just APIs, right? Just as the example of the object oriented programming, remember? The set of methods and attributes of an object are called an API in the object oriented context. Context. Similarly, web services are APIs in the context of the web, okay? So on the web, an API and a web service are the same thing. But in general, not every API is a web service. All right, so next time when you hear REST API or REST web service, they are basically the same thing. All right, let's answer the last question. What is a REST API? Or we could say, what is a REST web service? So a REST API is an API that follows the rules of the REST specification, okay? That's all you need to know right now. When we talk about REST architecture and rules in the next sections, you will come to understand what a REST API really is. Now, before I continue, I want to make sure you understand the rules part, okay? A web service, as we've seen in the previous video, has to follow some rules. More specifically, how we are going to talk to the other software component, what we will send, what we will receive, and how all of that is going to be handled. This is what we mean by rules. We could have an API that doesn't necessarily follow the REST rules. 
So a REST API adhere to the REST rules. All right, now we're ready to move to the next section. Let's talk about REST's representational state transfer. Um, instead of directly defining exactly what REST is, let me answer two important questions. And that first will help you put the REST piece in its right place in the big picture. And second, you will know the answer of the two questions. With that, we will hit two birds with just one stone. All right, let's see the first question. How does HTTP relate to REST? We all know that HTTP is an application layer protocol, meaning that it is a way to send and receive messages over a network. And feel free to check my video about HTTP. It clarifies a lot of things. As developers, we can use the HTTP protocol in any way we want. We could, for instance, build a server and a client that use only the get method for all kinds of interactions. We can use some of the headers to communicate some information, and we can omit some as well. If you know the HTTP protocol very well, you will know that you can do that. In REST, however, which is a specification that dictates how distributed systems on the web should communicate, we must follow certain rules that restrict the use of the HTTP method. So the answer to the question what is the relationship between REST and HTTP, REST is a certain way to implement HTTP communication. Okay, let's move on. Let's answer the second question. How does the web relate to REST? Well, that's a really great question. Roy Fielding, the guy who came up with the REST concept, in his dissertation, he actually took the web, analyzed it, dissected it, and extracted things from it. Okay? So REST is not something new. Actually, REST is as old as the web. REST is how communication on the web is supposed to work. Of course, Roy Fielding added a lot of stuff and gave us best practices and he did a lot of great things. But REST itself is the underlying architecture of the web. What does all of this mean? This means that developers broke the rules. If you look into web services that are built in the past and some of the new ones, you'll see a lot of violation of these rules. For example, REST says when you want to send something to a component on the web, say a service that posts data to a database, REST says we should use the post HTTP method. But that's not what all developers do. Some actually use just the get method for all operations. I know some developers will hate me if they hear this because developers don't want to be restricted. But REST is not about restriction. REST is about doing things how they're supposed to be done. And by the way, I'm not saying REST is the best architectural style, but it's still better than doing things arbitrarily. So now you know how REST relates to the web and the HTTP, and we know what are RESTful web services or RESTful APIs. Now let's define exactly what REST is and list some of its rules. And if you wanna dive deeper, I highly recommend checking the source, Roy Fielding's dissertation. I leave a link in the description. So to define REST, there is no better way than hearing the definition from its inventor. This is what Roy Fielding says about REST. Throughout the HTTP standardization process, I was called on to defend the design choices of the web. That is an extremely difficult thing to do within a process that accepts proposals from anyone on a topic that was rapidly becoming the center of an entire industry. I had comments from well over 500 developers, many of whom were distinguished engineers with decades of experience. And I had to explain everything from the most abstract notions of web interaction to the finest details of HTTP syntax. That process honed my model down to a core set of principles, properties, and constraints that are now called REST. So to put it simply, REST is just a way of communication between components on the web. All right, let's proceed. Let's talk about the rules now. For now, all you need to know is that there are two most important rules. These two rules are what most APIs need. And they are actually the answers of the two questions that every API should answer. Well, what are these questions? The first question is how to tell the service provider which operation the client wants to perform. Let's call it the method information, okay? The second question is how to tell the service provider what data the client wants to operate on. And let's call this the scoping information information. All right, so these are the two questions that every API should answer. Now, of course, there is more than an answer to each question, but if we want our API to be RESTful, we gotta answer with the REST rules. Let's see how REST answers these questions. REST answers the first question like this. The method information should be expressed in the HTTP verb. 
that's it so if we want to delete something we don't use the get method like this this is possible but it's not even intuitive right so we use the delete http method instead like this all right there is difference between the two requests the first one is not restful the second one is restful so to tell the service provider which operation the client wants to perform that information should be expressed in the http verb and the service provider when it receives the request it will open it and go look for the operation it needs to perform on the HTTP verb not somewhere else the second question which is what data the client should operate on or the scoping information as we called it well rest answers this question like this scoping information should go in the URI now if you're not familiar with URIs and URLs and the difference between them you will find the link to my video about URIs and URLs in the description and in the suggested videos and another thing to note here in REST everything that a client can operate on is called a resource and each resource is identifiable by a unique URI okay so here in the illustration the scoping information is a parameter in the uri so we've talked about what rest is and the rules and these are not the only rules by the way as far as apis are concerned these are the most important rules you need to know if you are into some advanced stuff you may want to look for more detailed resources i'll put my two favorite books on the topic in the description all right let's move on to the last section of this video how a RESTful API works. We had enough talk and I hope you have a good idea about all of this. Now let's see some action. And I think things are about to become clearer now. Let's do it. First, I'll show you how a RESTful API works in a typical service provider client communication using a diagram. And then I'll show you some code. So a REST API communication is just a typical HTTP communication that follows the REST principles and is restricted by the REST rules. So the first thing to note here is that REST APIs use HTTP methods suitably, meaning that each operation is requested by using the appropriate HTTP method, get for getting data, post for creating, delete for deleting, etc. The second thing is that REST APIs specify scoping information in the parameters or in static portions of the URI. And of course, as we have seen before, REST APIs use common data formats for exchanging data, like, like XML and JSON. And JSON is the most common data format in REST communication. The last thing I want to note here is that REST communications are stateless, meaning that the server doesn't maintain the state of its clients. This is an advanced topic, so I won't talk about it here. So here, as you can see from the diagram, it's just a typical request response cycle. We have the service provider and the service consumer. First, the service consumer or the client sends a request specifying the operation in the http method and and the resource it wants to operate on in the uri and of course if it's a post or put request it will contain a body then the service provider receives the request opens it analyzes it does some operations and it sends back the response and that's it all right let's see some code so here I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a really simple snippet of code. I just created it for the sake of this video, so it's it's not production stuff or something like that. So so here I use the Express framework uh, to build a simple REST API. Um, Express have a really nice and intuitive API for creating and building RESTful APIs. So it's just regular stuff. I require the Express module. I store the router object to use it later to create the routes. Uh, first, I define the root route, which is slash API, and I give it the router, which, which will handle the sub routes, okay? Then I created the first handler for the home route, which is equivalent to slash API actually. So when the client sends a get request to the home route, which is slash API, the service provider will send a JSON object, which contains a message that says, this is the response for your get request to the root route of the API. After that, I created another handler for a, another get request, but this time to the slash users route, which is equivalent to slash API slash users. And here I just assumed that we retrieve users data from a database and 
and convert them to a JSON object and sends the user's object in a JSON format. And I also created a post request for adding a user. So upon the success of adding a user to the database, the service provider sends a message to the client telling it that the user has been added. And of course, in a JSON format. All right, as I told you, this is not a useful API. It's just for the sake of explanation and clarification. So yeah. All right, let's see now the client code. So here in the client, we are using a module for making a request to REST APIs, which is called the REST client, okay? So after acquiring the module, we create a new client and give it the service provider address. And from then we're good to go. We can start making requests to the service provider. So as you can see here in the first request, we make a get request to the slash API slash users URI, which if you remember, retrieves all users from the database. And in the second request, which is a post request, we are trying to add a new user. All right, so this is just simple stuff just to get you familiar with the with REST APIs and how they work in, in code. So I hope I managed to give you a clear and solid idea about REST APIs. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And before I go, let me tell you something. So this is just a list of what you should know in order to start building relatively complex REST APIs, right? So first you have to have a solid understanding of HTTP methods, headers, and you know, the inner workings. And second, you must be familiar with data exchange formats like JSON and XML, okay? Another thing is that it would be a great thing if you know about REST rules and you understand the REST concepts, okay? And the last thing, which is optional but better, if you want to build REST APIs with Node, I recommend HappyJS or Loopback frameworks they are really great and easy to use and they save you a lot of headaches actually so yeah this is it i hope i didn't disappoint you and we covered a lot of stuff in this video so so it's okay if you didn't understand everything i talked about in this video just take your time to digest the concepts and feel free to repeat it or if you have a question or something i'd be happy to to respond to your question all right please don't forget to subscribe till the next video stay tuned